I got this log from Jimmy DeResta. I wasn't really sure what to do with it. I remember in one of his older videos he made a memory box out of one. I figured I'd give it a try. I cut some of the branches off, then I brought it over to the chop saw just to make it a little bit more manageable before bringing it to the bandsaw. Once I had it over at the bandsaw, I cut it at the length I wanted, and then I cut it in half. So now I would have a top and a bottom. Oops. I drew a line around the side of the box so it would make it a little bit easier to follow on the bandsaw. Now you want to take a slice off each end and this will make the ends of the box. You want to glue these up but you want to be careful because they are easy to mix up. They're mirror images of each other and the grain pattern looks very similar on both sides. Once I had them glued up I threw a few clamps on it just to hold it together. You might notice I marked the ends of the boxes. That helped me keep track of where each side went. Once the glue was dry, it was time to take them out of the clamps and clean them up a little bit. To clean them up first, I took a brush to them and got all the heavy stuff off. Then I grabbed a sand and sponge and went over them once with that. After brushing them off, I wanted to plane the top and bottom. I just wanted to square up the edges just so when I put the hinges on, the box would come together nice and tight. Here you can see I got a nice tight fit on that top and bottom. But I still had a little bit of the bark on it I needed to get off. So I went at it with the chisel. The chisel made easy work of it and in no time I had it scraped down and ready to be sanded. Once I had it sanded down I took the plane and just went over the bottom a few times just to make a flat spot. That way when it was on a table or bureau it wouldn't roll over and you could sit it upright and be able to open the box with it staying straight. Then I brought the box over to the belt sander. This belt sander made easy work of cleaning up these ends. Pro tip number one, get a rubber stick to clean your belt. Got out my sander, went over the whole thing with 120 just to clean up any glue that I might have missed with the belt sander and make all the edges look nice. Pro tip number two, when you have a long beard, keep it clean. <laughs> now let's get back to the show. Once I was happy with the way the box was fitted, I decided to put the hinge on. I marked it with a knife, then chiseled it out so the hinge would sit nice and flat when the box was closed. Pro tip number three. When putting on a hinge, put a little super glue. It will hold it to the box so you can mark your screw locations easier. I'm just wiping everything down before I put some finish on it. For the finish I decided to use Total Boat Satin Varnish on it. Pro tip 4. Put your project on these little blocks when finishing. Keeps it off your work surface and keeps it nice and clean. I put two coats of finish on this box. I sanded it with 220 between coats.
I wanted to finish the inside of the box, but I didn't want to use felt, so I wasn't sure what to use, but somebody suggested I use flocking. Yep, I said it, flocking. The process was a lot easier than I thought it would be. They sell a glue that is colored match to the flocking. You take the glue and you just paint whatever you want to add the flocking to. You want to cover it all, make sure it's coated really nice. If it's absorbent, you want to have it sealed. Then you add the flocking. Not really sure what the stuff is, but you put it in the applicator and you just give it a few pumps and boom, it's flocked. You can't flock it too much. Any extra flocking you can dump out, put it back in the bag, and flock it again. I really like this flocking process. It came out good. They also have different colors. Wine, green, brown, and gray. I think we're on Pro Tip 5. Pro Tip 5 can be used in woodworking, automotive, anything. If you're trying to screw something and you can't get it in, you take a little piece of tape, tape the screw to the screwdriver. That way you freeze up a hand and you can screw it with one hand. Job done. Once I was done the box didn't want to stay shut. So I took some rare earth magnets, drilled a quarter inch hole and inserted a magnet in there. Pro tip 6. You need to mark something, color it with a sharpie, press it down, now you know where to drill. X marks the spot. Pro tip 7. Mark all your pieces. You're never going to remember when you made them. Pro tip 8. Buy a professional backdrop. You don't want to do all this hard work and then take your photos on an old towel. If you like what you've seen and heard here, please comment, like, subscribe. And if you like the pro tips, definitely subscribe. I'm sure I got one or two more. I had so much fun cutting out these cedar logs, I just couldn't stop myself. Also, I'm going to be at Maker Central, May 11th and 12th. If you're going to be there, please introduce yourself. I'd love to meet you.